All right, here we go. Today we have music royalty in the building. Robert Cool Bell, founding member of the legendary group Cool and the Gang, who have sold over 70 million albums worldwide. With timeless hits like Celebration, Get Down On It, Ladies Night, and Summer Madness. Welcome to Vlad TV. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this is our first time sitting down together, so I want to start in the very beginning. So, you were born in Youngstown, Ohio. Yes. But you grew up in Jersey City. Yes. Uh, my family left Youngstown in 1960. And, of course, the band started in 1964. But different name changes. The Jazz Yaks, the Soul Town Band, Cool in the Flames, and then finally Cool in the Gang. Okay. And what was Jersey City like in the 60s? Well, Jersey City was a little rough uh, uh, coming out of Youngstown. Uh, I had to kind of adapt to the neighborhood. And I noticed that a lot of the guys that had nicknames. And so I came up with one. There was a guy who called himself Cool. He spelled his with a C. And I said, well, I like that name. So I changed my middle name to Cool and spelled it with a K and try to deal with the environment at that time in Jersey City. Okay. Any craziness was going on during that era? Well, um, kind of sort of. A quick story. My mother sent me to the store to get some Lucy bread back then. Two guys walk up to me and said, give me your money. I said, well, all I got is a quarter. Anyway. They took my quarter. I went back, told my mother, and she said, boy, you better go back out there and get that quarter. <laughs> but long, time, long story short, I became a, a part of that environment. That's what I meant by adapting to the environment. Was there craziness going on? Yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't like today, drive-by shooting and all that kind of stuff, but you had to kind of make it through the neighborhood. Not knowing that there were going to be a cool thing gang later from changing my name to cool. Well, before you, you, you guys actually start forming musical groups, where did you get your musical knowledge from? Well, um, I played a little bongos. Um, before um, we left Youngstown, my brother and I used to take these uh, paint cans. And uh, depending on how much paint was left, and the can uh, became like uh, little bongos. And so we used to sit on this little hill at a place called um, High School, called the Immaculate High School. And then when you beat in the can, it like echoed in the valley. That was the beginning of that. Uh, besides that, playing bongos, I switched over to the bass guitar. We were working in Cafe One. Spike Mickens brother played guitar. And I learned how to play one song on that guitar, on the one string, called Coming Home Baby. So one day my brother said, pick up the guitar and play that one song that you know on that one string. <laughs> and that became Coming Home Baby. And that's when I started playing bass guitar. Okay. And in 64, you guys formed a group, and it was seven friends got together and formed, right? Yes. And, you know, back then there were no drum machines, that there wasn't, you know, uh, you know, software and so forth. So if you guys wanted to play music, you actually had to get people that could play every instrument and actually jam together. That's true. That's how the uh, Jazzy Acts came together, our first uh, group. You know, um, we found the different musicians and we started playing together over the weekends and things started to jail. And we used to work up at a place um, in Jersey City called St. John's. And every Sunday they would have, uh, they call it like a, a, like a, a, um, a jazz brunch thing happening with younger musicians. But people like Farrell Saunders and, you know, McCoy Tyner and various artists would come through. And we would do our little thing. And that's how we end up calling ourselves the Jazz Jacks. Right. You had a bunch of different name changes. Uh, the Soul Town Band, uh, the New Dimensions. And 
finally, by 1968, you guys settled on Cool in the Gang. Right. Okay, so the name was kind of named after you. The band itself was named after you in a way, Cool and the Gang. After Jazz Jack, Soul Town Band, Cool in the Flames, uh, Cool in the Gang, yeah. Right, and I guess there was confusion because uh, James Brown had the famous flames. Absolutely. We didn't want to have any problems with the Godfather because you had James Brown and the Flamings, famous, excuse me, Flame. So mm -hmm. we said, well, what should we call ourselves? So um, Gene Red, whose father worked with James Brown at one time, said, well, well why don't you guys just call yourself Cool in the Gang? You got a little jazzy sound, you backed up groups from Soul Town, and that's how we became Cool in the Gang. Okay, so in 1969, uh, you guys signed at D-Light Records. Yes. And then that next year, you released your debut album, Cool in the Gang. Right. And uh, this album peaked at number 46 on the Billboard R&B chart. And back then, there were no vocals. This was just a purely instrumental album. Right. Was there a reason why you guys didn't use vocals back then? Well, um, we had backed up uh, various local vocal groups under the Soul Town Band. And, uh, and then we would do our own little thing in between sets and started creating that, that jazz R&B sound. That was the reason for that, because we were more on the jazz side. Uh, we did like, we call it chant. You know, like a, a funky granny or a funky man. On to Hollywood Swing and Jungle Boogie, you know. So it was pretty much on that side of the fence in the earlier days. Okay, and on that same label, after that debut album, you had two live albums, Live at the Sex Machine and Live at PJs. And right. then after that, you guys left the label, right? Right. Okay, and then in 72, the next album was Music is the Message. That's true. And uh, this album peaked at number 25 on the R&B chart. And uh, there was a song on there called Soul Vibrations. Yes. And what's interesting is that uh, I was just talking to Just Blaze this morning. He sampled uh, that song for Joe Budden's uh, hit song, Pump It Up. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever heard that song at all? I think I did. I mean, with so much of that going on, you know, in the earlier days. Yeah. Because I think because we didn't have a lead singer or lead singers, they uh, would listen to the track and pick, you know, guitar parts or drum parts or horn licks because there was no vocals in the way. So it made it very easy and likable for hip-hop acts. Yeah, let me get that guitar player. Let me get that lick. Let me do this. Let me do that. I mean, so many of your songs have become hip-hop songs, R&B songs, sampled, and so forth. I mean, when you first started to hear, you know, later on, you know, all these songs being redone and sampled and so forth, what did you think? Well, we uh, kind of felt pretty good about it uh, when they passed the law. And I think that was under Joe Biden, too, when he was a congressman, that... In order to sample uh, an act, you have to get the okay from the record company. So a lot of these samples, all these groups have to get the okay from the record company. Of course, then we started getting paid. Other than that, we had somebody on sample patrol catch that sample, but we ain't gonna get paid for it. Mm -hmm. So after that, we felt very good about it. And the fact that, you know, uh, people were getting more into our music because they were, you know, uh, some of the other artists were sampling their music, like you said. I mean, it was uh, Diddy with Hollywood Swingin', Will Smith, Summer Madness, Tribe Called Quest. It goes on and on and on. Um, yeah. I just learned that uh, there were 1,800 samples. I didn't know we had that many. <laughs> and uh, we have become the most sample group in hip-hop and in the world. When you really look at it, because there was... Uh, not a lot of sampling from the rock groups or from R&B groups. 
and more in the hip-hop world. But that makes us the most sample group in the world. Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys, James Brown and Parliament, I think, are like the oh, yeah. two big yeah. three ones that everyone pretty much sampled. Yeah, although James Brown said he was number one. And then the, uh, the statistics showed that Cooling Gang is number one. He used to say, ah, I'm number one, Cooling Gang is number two. And now we're number one, so. I mean, in order to get a sample, you know, you have to go to the owner and they have to clear it. You know, I remember talking to Sir, Sir Mix-a-Lot, you know, who did Baby Got Back. And, you know, that song has been making millions and millions of dollars. And he said that every so often he'll turn it down. He'll say, ah, no, nah, I just don't like the direction that you guys are taking the song. And do you guys ever turn down songs after hearing what the people want to do with it? Um, We have. But a lot of times uh, we would hear it and... Uh, we wouldn't know who who it was at the time to turn it down. But when it came with groups like, uh, or songs like Hollywood Swinging or, or Pieces of a Jungle Boogie or Summer Madness, you know, we, excuse me, we know who the artist was. So um, those we didn't turn down. 